Welcome to Win Games, Strategies for Success. Today we'll be looking at how to win tapestry. Now in our last video, we talked about the three essential questions to win a victory point game, but we applied them to a fairly simple, essentially solo game. Today, we're gonna see if we can put those on a more complex game, and tapestry would certainly qualify. We'll also be using the Plans and Ploys expansion, and as always, I'm gonna assume you know how to play the game and just wanna know how to win. Now, if you're familiar with tapestry, you are rightfully skeptical at someone who's telling you they are going to give you the strategy to win because the essential piece in tapestry is maximizing your civilization and timing your tapestry cards in order to produce the most points for whatever combination you happen to get. And I'm certainly not advocating that we have a strategy that will beat elite players. I would encourage you elite players to move along and keep being elite. For the rest of us, the question is, what's gonna happen when we apply those essential questions and can we come up with a strategy that will consistently give us a lot of points? And the answer is going to be yes. So let's take a look. The first question that we need to answer is what stops me from playing or what stops me from scoring? What is the limiting piece in this game? And it's not turns. You can continue to take turns as long as you have resources. That's going to be your limiting factor. Which then leads to the question, how can I get a lot of resources so that I can continue to play? And resources primarily come from a couple of places. The first is income buildings. As you remove or gain income buildings, they come off your playmat and suddenly you're receiving a lot more resources for income. That's quite helpful. The second is on advancement spaces, exploration actions, conquest actions, and upgrading your technology cards can all earn you resources when you're taking advancement turns. And the third place is the capital city. And the last place is moving into an era. If you're the first person into the second, third, or fourth era, then you'll get free resources for that. Question two we need to answer is what can I reasonably expect in terms of resources or victory points? It's most efficient to answer that question in terms of each track. If you were to simply take your turns, ignore civilizations and tapestry cards for now, but just from the track, what do I get from the track as I move up it with respect to how many resources I have? And if you were just to play the science track straight through, which we know is not a good idea, but we're just checking what we can reasonably expect, you'd get about 35 victory points. You'd have a resource probably left over at the end, and that would be about it. The big piece is you would have advanced probably about seven times on other tracks. So that's the main advantage of going up the science track. Now, if you were to come up the technology track here, you could expect probably around 61 victory points. And the biggie is you'd have about 12 resources left over at the end. Coming up the exploration track, you'd be at about 91 victory points. So we see it's going up by about 30 victory points as we move from track to track. You'd finish the exploration track with about five resources, not quite many as going up the tech track. And then on the military track, that's where you'd see the most victory points, around 122 victory points if you just move straight up that track. And we'll talk a little bit about why that would happen. You'd only have about four resources left over at the end, but you'd have an additional civilization. Although, kind of tough to know what you're gonna get out of that. And one of the differences we note about the military track is you can get all five income buildings that relate to that resource by moving up the track. On the other tracks, you get four of the income buildings associated with the resource. Technology, you do get a fifth building, but it's a building from one of the other three. So knowing about what we can expect then, where are the big points available? And tapestry is a tricky one for that. Oftentimes you wanna get more resources and take more actions, but you can get lost in the taking of actions and realize that they're not actually producing victory points that you want. So where are the big victory point places? Well, the first thing we notice is in tier four of each of these three tracks, there are some opportunities to score big either based on how you've done on other tracks or just cashing things in for 10 victory points. Not so much on the science track, it lets you advance on other tracks. The achievements are another place where we see 10 victory points possible if you conquer that middle island, topple two outposts, or finish a track first. Getting all of the income buildings off of a specific resource track is also a great way to score points. If you can get all of your farms off, that's a guaranteed 21 points when you take income. 
if you can get all of your armories off, you're probably looking at more like 24 points, considering the number of conquer actions you can take, minus the fact that you'd likely get conquered as well. If you got all of your markets off here, you'd get 10 points plus three times the total number of tech cards you have, which could very reasonably be five tech cards if you ran up the tech track there. If you can find a way to get more, that would certainly give you three, time, three points for every additional card you can get. And then if you can get all of your houses off, you'll get the 10 points, and in addition, you'll get to score your capital city three times. Well, how much is that gonna be worth? Anywhere from 19 to 64 points, depending on what your capital city is looking like. So if you can fill up that capital city, that is the largest single scoring thing in the game. It's also one of the more difficult to do. So now the question is, which of these overlap with question one? That is, which of these things can we do to earn big points while also gaining resources? Certainly you can earn little points while gaining resources if you're taking the explore actions or the con conquer actions, but where can we gain big points while earning resources? And the first obvious answer is removing income buildings. That both gives you access to resources every time you take an income turn, and it also gives you access to big points when you score during those income turns. The second place is filling your capital city. That's worth the most possible points in the game, and you also earn resources as you fill it, because as you're filling every district, you're getting a resource for doing that. And the third place, and it's a little bit trickier, is the tech cards over here. If you can get a lot of tech cards, and we'll talk about a way to do that, uh, because they don't have an upper limit the way that Conquering Tiles does. If you can get a lot of tech cards, suddenly three times tech cards becomes worth quite a few points at the end of the game. In addition, it ties into those other strategies. You can get resources and you can get income buildings using the tech cards. So we're gonna lay out here a strategy or some priorities or goals. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna walk through it and then I'll give you a playthrough to show you how many points this might actually produce. Now, in order to understand why we chose tech cards as the key piece to the strategy, it's important to realize that while you can get income buildings from exploration tiles, there are only four of them. And out of a total of 48 tiles, that means it's not very likely that we're gonna hit there. On the tech cards, however, if we consider getting resources filling our capital city and income billings to be our priority, take a look at how many of the tech cards line up with that strategy. We have a whole bunch of tech cards that'll give us access to buildings or access to things that'll let us get buildings. We also have a number of tech cards that will help us fill our capital city in addition to just getting us straight resource or straight victory points. And if we consider also tech cards that'll just get us a resource because we want more of those, there's a number of tech cards that'll do that, which means there are really only maybe 11 tech cards out of the 33 in the deck that don't do something that we want to do. And since you get to pick one of three, that means there's a very high chance, about 96%, that you'll be able to pick a tech card that gives you something helpful. Now, yes, those tech cards will be recruited by other people, but the majority of times we're getting tech cards, it's right after they've been cleared. So we should have a clean shot at getting things we want. And as we acquire tech cards, we're gonna have as priority anything that has an income building on it. Second priority is going to be filling our capital city, depending on how difficult that looks. And the third would be something with a resource on it. So we have chosen the tech track to be our first track to go up. And there's a couple reasons for that. The first is when you take income, you get a free upgrade. But if you don't have a tech card, that goes to waste. So we wanna make sure we utilize that. The second is these two tracks depend on each other. You can't just run up the military track without doing at least a little exploring, and you can't run up the exploration track without doing at least a little bit of conquering in order to advance yourself on the map. But the tech track you can run up without respect to anything else, and that means we're gonna be able to get into eras two, three, and four before our opponents. So while they are picking up additional resources from these actions, we will get those additional resources by being the first into these eras. At the start of the game, and this, this is what's gonna make your strategy work, you need to be the first person to take an action on the technology track so that anybody chasing you on that will always be one step behind. You'll take your technology card, you'll take 
a tapestry card and you'll pay the resource to get the income building. And at that point, you can stop and go directly into this era. Why? Even though you have one more resource and could pull off that second building, the second income building doesn't give you an additional resource. So you want to make sure you're the first one into the era. You're going to get an additional resource by being first. So at this point, you'll move yourself into that era, whatever the card is. You'll then continue up this track, take this action, and then this one, always choosing the income building when you can, because that's our top priority. This guarantees you that you'll get the forge. Nobody else can take a sequence of actions to get there faster than you, as long as you were the first one to move on the tech track. You'll add the forge onto your map. Now, when you look at your map, another big reason we're doing the tech track is the Rubberworks offers you the greatest coverage of any of the landmarks. So have in your head ahead of time, how does the rubber works fit? There's only one space where it'll really work on this map. So you know what you're playing the rubber works there. You're gonna put this income building then somewhere that helps you finish your districts. You'll continue up this track, choosing one of these three buildings when you get to here and probably paying for the upgrade unless there isn't any advantage to doing it because your free upgrade that's coming would be locked out because of the prerequisites. But if your prerequisites are gonna be filled, you can go ahead and pay for your upgrade. The house that you choose here, or the farm, or the armory, is going to depend on what it looks like you can get. If you've already picked up a tech card, indicating that you're gonna be able to get an armory, and then in addition, hit your square space and get yourself another armory, then you'd probably stay away from that one here because you have a good way to get those. You might wanna pick, all things being equal, a house, because we're, when we go up this track, we're only gonna get four of those houses. We'll hopefully be able to pick up a few of our armories and farms late in the game, after we've already maxed out some tracks by jumping back in on the lower tiers of these tracks where it's not very expensive. You'll then continue to here, and all things being equal, you'll stop. The one card we fear in this game is Dystopia, because someone could play a tavern or a tapestry card that would allow them to take the Rubberworks before we get there. If there's any risk of that, it's fine to keep going and get that as soon as possible. But if there isn't, we're going to stop right here, and as long as no one's racing us for that, we're going to move over to the science track. Now, you'll be taking income at some point in between all of this. Uh, making sure that you get there before other people, keep an eye on your opponents. But the other thing I would note is you've been doing the most expensive spending of resources possible, and you haven't been earning them yet. People who have been working up other tracks have been earning other resources, which they then feel the need to spend in order to get those income buildings off so they can get more income. So you're very likely going to be going into that third area before anybody else. You'll then come up the science track here, and when you get this initial roll, the answer is almost always no. We do not want to advance without getting the benefit. And the reason is, as much as you'd like to believe that the high tier stuff up here is really valuable and the low tier stuff is not, it turns out not to be the case. Consider this space right here. You get a conquer and you get an income building, but at what cost? Two resources. Well, down here you can get a conquer and you can get an income building and moving to both of those spaces takes one resource. So they're not actually more profitable up here. In fact, this space costs you three resources to get there and all it gives you is a couple extra victory points. Consider at any time if you were offered spend one resource, remove one income building, you'd take it. That makes these low tiers very valuable in the game. So we're not going to skip. The one exception would be explore. I would be willing to advance here and not take the two additional tiles because we don't plan to go exploring until much later in the game when we've already received plenty of tiles from taking income. You'll then continue to move up here, grab your tapestry, pay for your income building. Here, as always, we take the income building. Get to here, you're probably not going to get that building. But you'll continue up paying two tapestry cards and this time taking the advantage of this. And this is one of the reasons why we stopped here. If this roll comes out as tech, we would use that to move to here. If you've already gone here and you get tech, then you're gonna have to waste that roll because we really wanna be here where we can get more tech cards when we get to academic research. So if you can afford to, hover here, wait until you've done this, and then after you've hit this space, you're fine to move up into rubber works. You definitely want to get to rubber here and grab the rubber works before you go here, get your income building, and finally here to get 
academic research. Having this trigger rubber gives us two additional tech cards. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And as that we then continue through here, we're going to get our fourth income building on the market side, pop back six, seven here, and then get our fifth market as we come through here. So that's how we'll get all five markets and it's how we'll maximize the number of tech cards that we have so that when we're getting that three points per tech card at the end of the game, it ends up paying out big. When you've reached this space, ironically, there's very little value in moving here. If, if it looks like you have plenty of resources for some reason, and you wanna just try to ring the bell, or it's gonna get you 10 points for completing a track before other people, you can go there. I often don't because the resources are pretty tight in this game, and I need to make sure I have enough to do this, which there's a fair chance that you'll pick up one if not both of these landmarks. You probably won't get this one because of the amount of time you spent waiting on rubber works to get up the science track. But think about the science track. Nobody's going up here to academic research until they're in at least tier three. That would be a waste. And you got to tier three as quickly as can be conceived and then you went directly up here. So there's a good chance you'll be able to pick this up. And if not this one, then maybe this one. There's also a chance that you do pick up these. You never know what direction people are gonna go. The more landmarks you get, the better off you are. Regardless, you'd continue through paying most likely three tech cards for 10 if you're already in, as you likely will be, the third area. Because those three tech cards are gonna be worth nine when they score at the end of the game, might as well trade them for 10 here. Then when we get to this last space, we pick up four additional resources, and that's gonna fuel, likely dropping ourselves in over here on military, picking up the rest of our income buildings. If I had to choose a direction to go on income buildings, I wanna favor farms, they're the hardest to get. I like dropping in here because for just six resources, I can go through here twice and pick up four income buildings. I, I say six because we're gonna get kickback on this, likely make two more resources, and then we'll just have to pay the additional two there to pick up those armories. Farms are a little trickier, but again, this is likely gonna pay us a resource, or consider now you've waited till the end of the game, you may well have six of these tiles, and if you waited for all six tiles, you'll get to choose the best one to play, and you may well have picked up one of these. If you have picked up one of these along the way, it helps you plan, in terms of what income buildings you're choosing when you do have a choice. So the last little bit is just play it for the most points. Anytime you get to the end of a victory game, you just do the math on decisions. But our goal is to pick up the last few income buildings. That's the big deal. And then we like conquer actions. And here's where things get a little bit ironic. If someone runs up and heavily favors military, we said they probably will end the game with about seven territories that they control, unless they've had some additional assistance from their civilization or tapestry card. The reason being that's about how many of those actions you can get. And even though you can maybe double up and do some things again, people are also gonna be conquering you because you started early. We waited till very late in the game to take these conquest actions. And so everybody's pretty much done. And that means there's a fair chance we can conquer, conquer, and then with an additional explore, conquer and conquer, if we can make it maybe to here. And we'll be picking up five points worth of conquest, additionally having cleared all of our armories. So we're, we're getting just marginally fewer points than someone who heavily favored the military track because we come in at the end when nobody's gonna be there knocking them over. That's the hope. Now, in order for this to work, that is, in order to get all the way up the technology track and most of the way up the science track and still have enough left to pick up our last few income buildings, we're gonna need a lot of resources. So our civilizations and our tapestry cards are gonna have to help out with that. And we'll prioritize civilizations that help us either fill the, up our capital city, work well with technology cards, or give us resources. And based on those criteria, there are really only 11 civilizations out of the 26 that don't fit. That gives us an 82% chance of either getting one of the civilizations that's really good with this strategy, 
or at least of getting a civilization that's neutral, that is, that can be relied on to pick up some resources and let us get as far as we want to go along our tracks. Of the civilizations that don't work as well, there aren't any here that give us absolutely nothing. So we'll always be able to do something with them. But these are also civilizations that are well tailored toward those other strategies. Still, given two and the chance to pick one, we would take one of these and it should work out for us. The last thing we need to address is, is it reasonable to actually fill up your entire capital city? Well, you start with 81 spaces, 22 of which are already filled, and that gives you 51 left. 20 of those we'll hopefully get from removing our 20 income buildings. We'll also pick up potentially 22 spaces from the buildings on the tech track, or at least the first two here and one of these over here. And that leaves us quite a few more to get. Some of those are gonna come from your plan. You'll get probably around eight pieces, spaces filled out of the plan that you have. And then in addition, we'll pick up one, maybe two of those, if it looks like we need to fill it out some more. But that's something you can also keep track of during the game. If you're picking up those landmarks, then you don't have to focus as heavily on that on tech cards. Well, I think you have a good idea of what the strategy looks like in theory. Let's see what it looks like in practice. I'm gonna shuffle all the cards and we'll do a playthrough, a solo playthrough, making what we hope are some fair assumptions about how it might go. So we will roll to randomly select a civilization. Looks like we got number 18. For the sake of the video, we will ensure that this is one of the neutral civilizations we talked about earlier. We'll roll for our plan. Got the first one, TV station. So if we ever get three income buildings of the same type, we can put that on. We will shuffle the cards. They've already been shuffled, but once more, just for posterity. Now the leader civilization that we got there is going to allow us to advance on a track at the beginning of our income turns, but not get the benefit. So when we use that early, we'll be taking it with the tech track because we are gonna assume again that we're in a race with other players to get up that track first. And we're done with setup. We will take our first income turn, also we're in a tile, and the bag bottom is ripped out. That's okay, that bag was more or less a bonus anyway. Let's see what we have, a resource. And our tapestry card is Monarchy, which would give us three victory every time we take an income building. And we'll leave the tapestry card that we plan to play on the top of this little stack on the left. So second turn here, when we get a tapestry card and its infrastructure boost doesn't play into our strategy, we'll put it below. We picked up that tech card on our first turn. We're gonna spend one more resource now to get the benefit of the income building. And now we'll go into our income turn using the leaders to advance on the tech track. That gives us another one of those markets. We'll play in our tapestry card to take an additional resource, and then we get our upgrade and our income. The big benefit of advancing with the leaders is that we're now way ahead in the race. Ooh, we got an income building on our tile, so we have a way now to get farms late in the game. Okay, spend two resources. We're going to continue up the tech track, take that landmark, place it in a way that'll help us get resources once we get to the rubber works, and we'll grab the tech card that involves income buildings. Two resources again, we advance. We select the house because we have a way to get farms and we'll pick up the armories at the end and we're skipping the upgrade, which may have been a mistake, but we'll see how it goes. We pay those two resources, advance one last time before we take our income turn. We pick up our third income building, which qualifies us for the TV station landmark from our plan. I didn't notice it here, but we'll pick it up after this income turn. We're gonna take the military track for income because it gives us potentially an extra resource. And early in the game, we like resources. I also wanna save science so that I can use it when it would have cost me more. Oh well, no resource. Our tapestry card, however, will get us two resources first into the era and it is stolen plans. So we'll also get eight points and a tech card of our choice. Notice now that we're in a great position to get any of the income buildings that we need and to hit the square and repeat that benefit using our tech cards. We'll take income here and we'll pick up an additional resource when we place our TV station landmark. And we've left space for the rubber works. If someone was chasing us, we'd go straight to it. We're gonna assume they're not and we're going to head up that science track. 
The tapestry card we just gained, Entertain the Masses, will cover a 2 by 4 square space on our capital city. So if we were not going to get the academy when we got to academic research, we would be fine playing this card. But the next tapestry card we pick up, Surprise Party, will give us an armory. So assuming that we're ahead of our opponents, as we likely are, especially playing the leaders, we will stick with Surprise Party. So we made it through Tier 1 on the science track. We skipped the optional advancement that astronomy gave us. We've been placing all of our income buildings so that when the landmarks come, we'll be able to get resources from it. And as we draw the trade economy, we notice it references opponent's current position. And then our next roll will give us an advancement with benefit, which we've been waiting to see if this is going to be technology. It's not. It's science, but we'll spend our two tapestry cards on five victory points before we forget. And then we'll take that free advancement on science, picking, of course, the income building. We are now ready to advance on the technology track and pick up the rubber works. If we had been challenged in that at all over the last few turns, we would have jumped up and grabbed it before they could get there. But here it goes, and we pick up three resources from it. I'm going to let two of those resources be workers because of all the workers we'll need moving up the science track. On the tech card choice, we'll get assembly line. And when lithium ion battery comes up here, I understand it'd be the best play, but I'm gonna skip it because of how powerful that card is, especially with quantum physics where we're headed. I don't want this playthrough to look pendant on picking that tech card. Placing the academy for our final play in this era, we will gain two resources and we will reactivate rubber on the tech track in order to get two more tech cards. And we're now ready for our final in-game income turn. We will activate the science track using the leaders because that saves us three resources. It also pulls that last house off, which will give us some points when it scores, and five right away for the houses. For the tapestry cards, I would have gone with Entertain the Masses if we hadn't picked up the academy. As we did, we'll take the income building from Surprise Party. Now, it might seem concerning that that's the first of the farms or armories that we've pulled off, but we have a lot of upgrades coming and we are going to take care of it during this final era. As we evaluate which upgrades to do, we're wanting to get those income building spaces into play. We don't appear to need any more landmarks. We're going to come pretty close to filling. We'll take income, grab that last tile, and the tapestry card that we will not use. We pay the three resources. We advance to physics. We select the technology track. On the technology track, we advance to plastic, get our fourth income building and points. We pay the additional resource for the upgrade, and that gets us a farm as well. Now, as we place that farm, it completes a district, and we earn a resource. And you'll notice I chose food. I've already counted that I have as many golden workers as I need, so we're going to focus on the resources necessary to get our farms and armories at the end of the game. As we pick this tech card, I really like to have a tech card with an income building on a circle as well as one on a square, so that when we get those circle and square benefits, both from moving up the tech track and from assembly line, we have income buildings we can earn with them. And there's our final move on the science track. It will take us twice up the tech track, and it will move us through the most expensive part of the tech track at the cost of two workers. We pay one additional resource for the upgrade to pick up the armory, and then we're ready to advance to electronics and do it again. This time we'll upgrade assembly line. It will give us the square benefit from the card in our top row, so we'll take a farm. And then for the circle benefit, we'll reactivate assembly line and take another farm. Remember that lithium ion battery is the only tech card that can't be activated more than once in a turn. For the upgrade and the benefit on nanotechnology, we're going to take an armory when we upgrade, but we're gonna pick a farm for our square benefit because again, we're about to drop back in on the military track and we'll have more options to pick up those armories. We also still have that exploration track on the leaders, which could help us pick up a farm at the very end of the game. We sold three of the tech cards for 10 points because they're only worth nine when they score at the end of the game. We're gonna assume we were second to finish a track, take five points there and then we'll drop back in onto the military track, gaining four resources for finishing the technology track. So we've now reached our final series of turns, which means we need to explore so that when we move up the military track, we have good things to do when we conquer. And of course, we choose the tile that gains us a farm, 
pick some points for placing it as well. We are then ready to move up the military track, gaining a useless tapestry card, paying the additional resource because what we're really interested in is getting all of those armories off and getting as many conquer actions as we can. Having counted how many resources it's going to take to get all of those armories, when we take our conquer actions, we will only pick a resource if we're going to need it. Once we have how many we need, we'll start taking the victory from those conquer actions. And you can see that we did it. We got all of our income buildings off as we played these last few resources. Unfortunately, we were not quite able to fill our entire capital city. We were one space shy. But 3 times 16 is still pretty big, even if it's not 3 times 18. And on our final income turn, our leader benefit isn't much, but we'll take the points from placing one of our tiles. For our upgrade, we will take either of those tech cards that give us five points. And then we will score 31 points for having our markets off, 58 points for having all of our houses off, 21 as always for farms, and 20 for the armories, finishing with 273 points. And that's how you win tapestry. Thanks for watching.